If you're feeling like the skin on your neck, it looks a lot different than the skin on your face and that it's giving your age away while well, you're not alone. This video is for you. I am a cosmetic dermatologist. Skin laxity as well as skin aging on the neck are common issues that I treat in my office. So let's talk about how to address the different signs of aging on your neck. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Swati Cannon and I am out here in California. First of all, how is the neck skin different than the skin on your face? Your neck skin is thinner, so that automatically means that it has less color less elastin, and it's more prone to these superficial wrinkles that we often see on the neck. And now, especially with constantly like looking at our phones, we have developed tech necks, which are these horizontal bands that you can see even in younger patients. Neck skin also doesn't produce as much oil as your facial skin. And when you don't produce as much oil and you have fewer adnexal glands in the neck, this means that it has a higher risk of scarring or discoloration from certain laser procedures, resurfacing procedures, or chemical peels. So as a cosmetic dermatologist, I am careful when recommending in-office procedures or just treating the neck in general with different devices. I also tell my patients that we want to treat the face, neck, and the chest as one unit. If your face looks 30, but your neck and your chest look 80, but that's going to create a stark contrast when somebody's looking at you and that looks weird. So that's an extreme example, but you kind of get my point. What causes neck aging? There are various causes for why your neck may look older. Just like all signs of aging on the face, even neck aging is multifactorial. But there are two signs of neck aging. So first is sagging or skin laxity on your neck. And the second one is sun damage. And we get sagging for, again, multiple reasons. There isn't really a bone here, so we don't get any bone loss. We don't really have any fat compartments within our neck like we do in our face. So here we mainly see signs of collagen and elastin loss. And we can see the platysmal muscle, which is the band of muscle that acts as a sphincter here, that muscle can age as with time and it causes different kinds of bands that you can see in patients. You can now also have abnormal fat deposition. So while we don't have fat pads, you can actually deposit fat differently when you age versus when you're younger. So the most common abnormal fat deposition is people will start depositing fat like right here. It's called the submental fat. And when you deposit fat in your submental area and in your neck, and this is combined with sagging and loss of the platysmal muscle tone, this then contributes to the turkey neck appearance or causes the turkey neck appearance. Your neck skin can also get sun damage, just like your facial skin. This sun damage usually manifests with sunspots, something called seborrheic keratosis, which look like these little warty growths that you see in the picture here. Your neck skin, as it thins down because of collagen loss, can get something called poikloderma, which is a type of sun damage that we have to treat with laser. So your neck skin not only looks older because of the laxity, also because of the sun damage, like I mentioned before. For skin laxity, we have multiple treatments that can help. There are certain skin tightening devices like ultrasound technologies, and I mentioned using these devices more extensively in my jowling video here, but we can use ultrasound devices to deliver heat into the deeper layers of the neck to then help with collagen stimulation. These ultrasound treatments are usually referred to as high intensity frequency ultrasound devices, or HIFU for short, and there are many subtypes of HIFU devices, but the more common ones we think of are Altera, Softwave, Thermage, etc. These don't injure the skin. So they're just penetrating heat into layers, into the deeper parts of our skin, but they're not injuring the skin. And this is what differentiates these kinds of devices from devices called microneedling with radio frequency or RFMN devices. And I'll talk about that in a second. Now, I have a lot of these ultrasound devices like Softwave, Thermage, Altera, Forma in my office, and I kind of use the one I think will be the best for the patient. I tend to particularly like Softwave for the neck because it delivers heat 1.5 millimeters deep into the skin, and that's just deep enough to help with collagen stimulation on the neck and the lower face. The results from these tightening devices are variable because collagen production is variable. So it's easiest to treat using these devices when you're in the earlier stages of your neck sagging versus in the more uh, later stages. Now, if you're finding this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button below and don't forget to share with your friends and family. For superficial skin crepiness, like in this picture here, we want more superficial tightening. And I like to do this usually with microneedling with radio frequency devices. Morpheus is a common device that people have seen on social media, which is a type of RFMN device. I have said this before, but Morpheus isn't some amazing device. I mean, it's a good device, but the reason people have heard so much about it is because the company was very good about marketing it. What RFMN devices do, as I've mentioned before, they use needles to create injury into the skin, and then heat is also delivered at that depth. So with these devices, we can actually change the depth of 
heat penetration by changing the depth of needle penetration. You can also use certain lasers to help tighten the skin kind of underneath the underneath the chin or on your neck. One of these lasers is called a 1064 ND YAG. Now we commonly use this device for multiple different conditions like hair removal, we can use it for vascular malformations, but we can use it in certain settings to be able to heat up this area here without causing a burn, so you have to be careful. We can heat the area uh, here and it will help with collagen stimulation and usually multiple treatments are needed. Now I often combine RFMN devices with collagen boosting fillers like Radius or PRF. Radius is a type of filler which is made of calcium hydroxyapatite crystals and this type of filler can help to volumize but we don't want to add volume per se into the neck. We want to use Radius for its collagen boosting properties so we will dilute the Radius to then help with its collagen boosting properties. And I usually dilute Radius with PRF or platelet-rich fibrin. Platelet-rich fibrin is similar to PRP, but just a little bit different. And I have a whole video on biostimulatory fillers and a whole video on PRF, so you can learn more about what those are. But I use Radius with PRF to help with neck tightening. So for some patients who need deep neck tightening as well as superficial neck tightening, I will use a combination of RFMN plus Radius and PRF, and we need at least two treatments to then be able to see results. Again, results are delayed, like with all collagen stimulating treatments. So if you look at this video here, I am using a combination of Radius and PRF. I'm injecting her chest wrinkles, but this is very similar to what I do in the neck. Usually this treatment is fairly painless. You might feel a little bit of pressure, but I'm actually using a blunt needle called a cannula to inject this mixture. Another biostimulatory filler is called Sculptra or PLLA or polyelectric acid. I love using Sculptra for its collagen stimulating properties in the face, but I don't like it on the neck. And that is because the neck has a sphincter muscle, which is the platysma muscle. A sphincter muscle means that it kind of like encircles that area. And there is a risk of nodule formation. And that's when the Sculptra kind of gets stuck in clumps and then causes excessive collagen around that clump. So there's a risk of nodule formation with Sculptra injections within sphincter muscles, like around the mouth, around the eyes, and then around the neck. So I don't really use Sculptra on the neck. I like it on the face and other parts of the body. Another reason for neck fullness or banding is because of the strong platysma muscle, like I mentioned before. Platysma is a muscle that connects from your collarbone all the way to your lower jawline. And if these muscles are really strong, it can form these bands. And sometimes these bands can pull on the lower face and that can contribute to sagging and jowling. And I mentioned that in my jowling video. But on the neck itself, it can make your neck look older. So what we do is that we inject the platysmal bands with Botox to help soften their appearance. I actually use Botox in my platysmal bands. So when I make that face, you just see a few bands, not as much as you normally see, but doing that helps to sharpen my jawline better and decreases the banding on my neck. However, after a certain age, the platysma muscle can sometimes separate. So usually they separate in the center right here, and it causes this like turkey neck appearance with the two bands in the center. This is called decussation. And once this happens, no amount of Botox can really help. And the only way to improve it is to do surgery. Tech neck is another common issue that we now see. And tech neck is characterized by these horizontal bands on the neck. And this is now appearing in younger patients because we're constantly looking down at our phones or at our computers. So when I see this in my younger patients, the first thing is of course to change your habits. You know, try to take breaks from your phone. We can also inject Botox into the platysmal bands to help minimize the horizontal banding. We can do RFMN treatments to help with collagen stimulation to reduce the appearance of tech neck. But the quickest way to make a difference for these horizontal necklace lines or the tech neck is to inject dilute hyaluronic acid filler. So this is different than the biostimulatory fillers like Sculptra or Radius. Hyaluronic acid filler, literally we dilute it down and we inject tiny little beads kind of along your necklace lines. The hyaluronic acid then kind of integrates into your skin tissue to then help minimize the look of these horizontal lines. Hyaluronic acid filler though doesn't last, so most people do need repeat treatments every year or so. A lot of people also genetically have fullness of their submental area and of their neck. And this fullness is kind of composed of fat deposition, giving that heavy look. The best way to treat this kind of heaviness is with liposuction combined with tightening. You can also use Kybella to help dissolve some of this fat. But like I've said before in my jowling video, 
Kybella is a treatment that causes a lot of inflammation and the recovery period is about two weeks per treatment. Kybella also takes multiple treatments for it to be effective. What is Kybella? It is a molecule called phosphatidylcholine that is made also by your gallbladder and it's released by your gallbladder to help digest fat within our diet. We have now isolated that molecule, put it in injection. So when we inject it into the fatty areas, it actually digests the fat and then part of your immune system called the macrophages these are i call them the garbage disposal cells of your immune system they come in and gobble up of all the digested fat so that's kind of the gist of how kybella works i still i do think though you know liposuction is a better treatment than kybella we can also use something called cool sculpting and i'm going to actually make a video on cool sculpting but cool sculpting is a device that comes as you know that has applicators and we would attach an applicator to the fatty area underneath the chin it then freezes the fat without affecting the any skin on top so it selectively freezes the fat which then gets dissolved by your body now moving on to the second sign of neck aging which is the sun damage we can use a variety of devices to help with sun damage depending on what kind of sun damage you have now if you have lentigenes which are sun spots we can use devices that specifically target those brown spots if you have a general redness and brownness kind of of the area we can use ip or intense pulse light or BBL or broad-based light to help even out your skin tone. If you have excessive redness or something called poikloderma, we can use a laser called PDL or XLV to then help target the redness to even out the tone. So the photo, photo damage is you know different per person and it kind of depends on what kind you have for me to then be able to recommend the type of laser treatment you need. A common sign of sun damage I see on the neck also is seborrheic keratosis, which are these warty growths. I mentioned them earlier. For these, we actually have to burn and scrape them off. So most patients, you know, will have a combination of these different things contributing to their the aged appearance of their neck, it's just similar to the face, similar to the chest. So we have to combine different treatments to be able to help. Have you tried any of these treatments? Please let me know and comment below. Now, what about neck creams? This is a common question. What neck creams can I use to help tighten my neck? Well, I am going to actually make a separate video about that, which is my neck Next video so make sure you hit that subscribe button and stay tuned as mentioned before most of my patients have a combination of issues causing neck laxity so i do have to combine treatments to be able to help if you have severe neck laxity with banding none of my non-invasive options would give you drastic results for that you usually need a neck lift plus correction of the decussation of the platysma muscle but most patients that come to me don't really want surgery so i have an arsenal of devices and treatment options to be able to help them and additionally you know like i said we want to treat everything as a unit so i will often treat the lower face and the neck together and one treatment that has been a game changer for lower face and the neck is called Elacor. This is a new device that is a microcoring device. So it's not a laser. It's not an ultrasound tightening device. It's a microcoring device that has been giving us really great results like this one. So if you want to learn more about Elacor, make sure you check out this video, which goes extensively over Elacor and how we perform the treatment. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.